Hey, love bugs, it's Roslyn back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome. And to my returning subs and my growing extended beautiful family, just thank you so much for the support. Being able to know, and I know I say this a lot, but I do appreciate that. You know, being able to know my struggles and my time of darkness and solitude and be able to reflect in videos and and being able to know that other people can find their you know their viewpoint through my videos is truly a blessing to me so I'm glad I can be able to assist you in that way is where you're doing it for me as well so with that being said much love to all namaste love and blessings love and light and many blessings are definitely coming your way and if you have been watching my videos for a while and have not already please like and subscribe hit that notification bell at the bottom so you know when I'm about to upload my next video also if, um, I would love the chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me. So if you're comfortable, go ahead and drop me a line or two. Um, even if it's about the, co you know, uh, positive feedback of the content of my video, or you're just up telling me about your impact, the gift, and how it impacts your life and head you towards a positive direction. Also, if you feel like the video gives you good vibes or good information, you would love to share with a loved one, family, or friend, or even a fellow empath that needs spiritual guidance or, you know, need confirmation or validation towards the life path or soul purpose, please go ahead and share. While you're at it, give me a thumbs up, like, and also share on your social media favorites wherever you see fit. Thank you once again for the love and support. is greatly appreciated and I hope you're able to resonate with the content of my video. And the background music I'm using today is called Erase Mental Block. Subconscious negativity boosts positive energy, spiritual connection. And I'll post that link in the description box below. And today my video is about Twin Flame 101. Hey Okas, when we spend time for rescuing others remember you have to rescue yourself first you know if that ain't the truth you know we always have that problem you know a lot of times when we're going through our things in life we get frustrated and then when somebody else comes along it distracts you from the things you got going on being able to help people and you know and it's like a catch-22 to me you know it's a good thing that you can be able to help somebody out but it's like you can't constantly keep helping other people out and find a solution to their problems when you can't do the same thing for yourself you know and it was just like with me um i closed down my group page yesterday you know i didn't want to but it was just like it was helping people you know pushing them out to be able to converse about different things because like i told people you know um i i never found a heyoka group page on facebook you know so i wanted to start something new off you know just like i do here on my on my uh youtube platform i wanted to be able to do it there you know to get people to vocalize the things that go on in life and what they struggle to deal with, you know, to be able to push people out to talk more, you know, to be around, you being able to, you know, communicate and converse around with other people that are like-minded like you. But it was just like, it wasn't enough activity. You know, it was like me constantly posting things and it would be the same people that would comment and share, you know, and I appreciate all the ones that were there, even the other ones that didn't, you know, but it was just like, I'm doing more for them and, you know, it's taking more time. I could be being able to better myself. I'm taking time out for other people. Or there was things that I was able to give people advice for when I wasn't being able to do that for myself. So it was just like, you know what? You have to be able to appreciate that experience, but you know, not everything is going to go how you plan it to, you know, when it's time to be able to do something like that, you can always go back and do it. You know, I just put it in, you know, archives. So it's like, even when I want to open it back up again, I can always go back and open it back up. But at that time, it was just like, you know what, look, <clears throat> you know, I just shout out people that, you know, I sent them a message that the people that were, you know, doing the main you know, posting and commenting and sharing and stuff like that. I went ahead and acknowledged them. And I said, I appreciate everybody. It wasn't like a negative viewpoint, but a lot of people don't take, you know, don't take initiative to want to do that. You know, they put, you know, their, you know, their impact on something else, you know, and then they wouldn't do it there. So it was just like, you know what? You can at least say you tried. So it was, you know, I didn't get mad or anything like that because it was a life experience be able to do that you know but everybody can't be saving you know because it's a bad thing i mean it's like it's a it's not a bad thing let me not say that let me retort you know um it, it's like when we want to when we're going towards our blessings we're trying to save everybody and i knew I, when i was listening to a motivational speaker like i was talking about miss miles i think her name is yolanda miles or lisa miles um and she was like we always when we're going towards our blessing 
you know, and the door opens for us, we're we're trying to bring everybody with us. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be able, that door was only fit for you. You know, if it's meant for you to be able to do that, you'll tag people along. And it was like, with my situation, I've come connect with a lot of people. And it was like me always trying to save them and stuff like that. But it was just like, you're supposed to help guide them. You're supposed, you know, you're going to be that person that you had to meet along the way of lessons and blessings regardless of what goes on and they're supposed to be that same way for you but it was a lot of times i was trying to save everybody trying to super save an empath all the time but it was just like you can't do that you know because a lot of people are not going to be there for the right right reasons and some of them are you know i'm not saying that everybody i come in contact with is trying to mooch off of me but it is just like there is people that have that frame of mind with themselves like whoo you know she's this and this and this and that well let me see if she'll do this and this and that for me and there's a lot of people i had to be able to separate myself from because they you know jumped to conclusions they were going to do that or it was things i seen that i said i wanted to be able to help them with because i wanted to be able to save the world i wanted to be able to do all these different things but you know not all the time that's not what god allowed that wasn't the plan for god to do that you know for you to be able to connect with people for things that you didn't know that they could teach you and you know vice versa you have to be able to rescue yourself first you have to be able to understand your path you know and it's just like you know a lot of people that do the motivational speaking they're you know they're successful they had to go through their time of struggles they went through their low point they were at the bottom of the barrel then they got themselves up and then they're healing people but god didn't have that for me you know that is that wasn't his plan he wanted me to struggle going through my situations being able to be you know have y'all do my journey in life it's like watching a season of whatever i feel like is like buffing the damn vampire slayers you know it, it's just a lot of things i can relate my life to that God has, you know, basically prepared me for. And it's just like when I can sit back and see that. I said, I noticed a lot of times you try to get your point out. He was like, well, shoot, that's the only way you're going to listen to me anyway. If I break it down like that, he dumb it down dot com for me. <laughs> you know, so it was like, well, let me give you this this show and then you can go ahead and relate to it and it was a lot of things if you ever seen Buffy and the Vampire Slayers with Sarah Michelle Geller I said one day I'm gonna meet that girl and tell her you know what you don't got me through a lot of hard times because a lot of things that she can relate to that she was you know that I can relate to as well you know growing up not knowing even though this you know I always wanted to be able to save the world I did not know how I was gonna do it and I didn't realize to be able to help others along their way it was gonna be through my life of tragedy and being able to do that, that's what I'm supposed to be here for. And, you know, and it, it's just allowing you to be able to be that student teacher situation with anybody you connect with, you know, being able to know, okay, you could be searching for things or whatever, and you tend to get your aha moment just for, just by connecting with a lot of people because there's sometimes, you, you know, God be like, okay, let me just orchestrate these two connecting or whatever and then they'll start seeing a lot of things they're both struggling with it could be a different situation but they're same you know same problem so oh, excuse me being able to go through all those things has been a lifetime experience for me being able to know that i'm you know i never regret meeting the people i didn't because you know i got beautiful experiences out of that you know even though it might not have ended right or ended in a good note you know i never sat here and say i never wish that i didn't meet Thing because anybody you ever meet, anybody that you ever, you know, connect with has taught you something, you know, no matter what, if it was good or bad. But there's a lot of times as us being empath, we fall short on always trying to save everybody else. And we don't even get a chance, give ourselves that chance to save ourselves, you know, and it's just like, I'm always trying to coddle somebody, always trying to do that with my kids as well. But it's just like, you know, I have to be able to allow them to, you know, fall and get back up and learn how to fall and get back up you know a lot of my children are going through those different things like that it's a lot of my children I only got three girls but you know it's just like they always they're always going through something so they're able to learn how to survive you know i want to be that person and be able to you know being able to coach them and saying it's going to be okay and i always try to do that with them you know they go through their life experiences just like you have to go through yours but it's just with us being empaths you have to be able to while you're trying to save the world you have to make sure you save yourself first you know because if you're not there no more you you know that somebody else is going to be trying to do the things that you're doing so i have to really tell myself that you know it's just like i got frustrated with that you know 
especially dealing, dealing with my, you know, my group page and stuff like that. You know, I said, I really just want to, you know, help people because it was like people that I do one-on-ones with, you know, I said, yeah, I really want to do this. You know, I want to do something interesting and, you know, try to get people to talk more. And, you know, it, it did get some people out there to share, and, you know, talk a lot more and this and this and that. Um, but it was just like other people wouldn't do that. And so it's just like, it's okay. You know, you, you got to be able to commend for the things that did happen. You know, you did get other people to venture off. And it's just anytime I tell people that I talk one-on-one -on -one with that I still talk to, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, pushing out positivity when they ask to share something, or Rosalind, can I share something with you? It's just like, yeah, I want to be, I want you to be able to share stuff with me, you know, because there was a lot of times that, you know, me being a parent as I am, you know, I didn't have a lot of time to be able to get with my kids for them to be able to share things because I was trying to be a mom, paying the bills, you know, being off working two jobs, you know, trying to get, you know, trying to get my grind on. I didn't get a chance to be able to experience a lot of things with my kids because I was always a working mom. So it's just like, it was a lot of times when they really needed me to be there, I couldn't be there emotionally for them. So it's, it's just like when I meet people, I try to be able to connect more because it was just like I understood that because my, my parents weren't there. My mom would try to be there, but she went through a lot of dark times. So it's like her depression got the best of her. And there was, you know, when I sit up here and see my situation, I see me going down that same road with her, but it's like my mom is there. My mom's like, you know, she's still in my ear like, Rosalind, you know, it's going to be okay, you know. Know, now you know and I always tell her I'm so sorry because I always told my mom I would never be like you you know just because this man did this and this that to you you know because like I told y'all before if you've been with me for a while you would hear me say that my my mom's ex-husband I'll never call my dad anymore but my my mom's ex-husband had turned me against my mom and tried to make me feel like my mom was weak you know this and this and that but I did not realize how much that man has really did to her you know had me looking at her like that because now I'm seeing my daughter's doing the same thing to me that I did to my mom you know he had his you know he had his little plans into that as soon as I said that my phone lit up you know um he did that to my mom, my daughter as well to have me looking at me like that you know so it was just like wow you know this is like a reoccurring thing I'm gonna this in the bud you know and it was just like even though during that dark time when my mom was dying, going through her transition, I used to tell her sorry all the time, you know, because then I finally started seeing what her ex-husband was capable of. And it got worse after my mom died. And then just finding out more things about my family really put me in a dark state of mind, you know, looking and knowing that somebody you always looked up to that you thought loved you didn't give two dams about you he, he thought about the benefit of having you around you know what money he could get you know for his wife and allow her to have the best things in life and all these things to be able to help her cater to her but make your child suffer at the same hand so it was just like I never allow my kids to understand what that felt like because I know what that felt like and I never wanted my kids to know what that felt like so it's just like going through these times of healing and reflecting. You know, there's times I sit here and cry and I tell my mom, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Because <laughs> it's like, you have to be careful. Like I tell any, I tell my kids, be careful how you treat your parents. Because it's like, you might say some sassy stuff. And I was one of the ones that had a quick mouth. And I was quick to get drop kicked too in a way, you know, because I used to talk back to my mom. And, you know, I said, be careful how you do that. You know, because you never want that to be reflected on you. Because I used to tell my kids, like, ooh, I can't wait till y'all have kids. Because it's like with my oldest daughter, I told her, she's like, oh, you know, my grand, you know, my granddaughter would never do her that way. I said, you know, and I started laughing. And she's like, why? That's not funny, mom. I said, no, it's not. But that's exactly the same thing I told my mom when you were that age. Oh, my daughter ain't going to never do me that way. We ain't going to have that kind of connection. We ain't going to have that. And, you know, lo and behold, me and her had the same kind of interaction that me and my mom did. So there are so many times that God, you know, when you have to be careful how you treat people because God will act, you know, will put you in a situation to allow you to see what you did. Even though it wasn't really my fault, I had that choice, but I didn't have that choice because, you know, my mom's ex-husband wanted me to see her in a light that was he orchestrated not my mom actually being that is that person because you know my mom was really going through some dark stuff you know trying to heal trying to understand you know angry at the world because she felt like you know i was i wanted my daughter to be able to see her biological father being able to know her biological mother but my husband don't want that 
You know, now my husband up and left me because of the things that I wanted for my daughter that we adopted, you know, and then all these different things occurred. So it's just like I try to tell my kids, you have to be careful. You know, like if you, you have your parent around or whatever like that and y'all have an oil and water relationship, if y'all can try to mend it, you need to go ahead and mend it. <laughs> you know, you don't want that because it's just like, you know, I tell, I tell my kids, we're all living in our last day. And, you know, and she's like, what do you mean? Are you, are you dying? I said, shoot, I'm, I'm dying every day. You know, one day, you know, you live another day. It's just the last day that you have for the next day. And I try to tell my kids that I try to instill that into them. You know, anybody that I'm close to that I talk to on a, on a basis, you know, and your parents are still living, I tell them, you know, we're not going to always have our parents, you know, that it's the circle of life for us to bury our parents. And there are some circumstances that is said that some of the parents are burying their children. I always say that's the worst situation to ever, ever live in where you have to bury your child. It shouldn't even be that way. It should be totally opposite. So I always tell people, if you know if your parents are still living and there's something you can mend and heal, do that. Because I'm telling you, there are going to be many a days. My mom used to tell me that. There's going to be many a days you're going to wish I was still around when I'm not around. And she told me this right when she found out she was dying because me and my mom were going at it. And it was just a blessing. It was a blessing that God allowed me to have that, you know, that grand exit with her. You know, even though I was mad as hell at God, I ain't even going to lie. When my mom first died, I said, how dare you? How dare you sit up here and allow my mom, me, to have the mom that I've always wanted my whole life. I haven't had this since I was like very, very little between, I think it was like seven and eight years old because it was like when, when we got to my 10, 11 years, you know, that's when her marriage started getting really rocky because my dad was calling a lot, wanting us to move to Minnesota and all that stuff. And it was just like shit hit the fan. So it, it was just like, you know, how dare you sit up here and allow me, but I didn't uh, actually being able to see that blessing because I was so angry at the universe, so angry with God, you know, because um being able to know that how you know my mom's dying and you you know as soon as the mom that I always wanted you know you took her away from me and I mean I was mad you know I'm sitting up in front of my mom's church and saying this and they're like <gasps> you know all those different things so now it's just like during that reflection during you know my spiritual awakening through all these things you know I moved in a different state so it was just like where I was living in the midwest you know, I can go back and see where my mom used to stay, go back and see, you know, where we used to go to church at and all these different things. I have no memories here except the last little bit of clothes my mom had in pictures. That's all I had left. So it was just like a really bad time for me trying to heal and all those things. I had to be able to work on myself. So going through this stage of awakenings and stuff like that, I'm glad that God universe allowed me to have this platform to be able to voice the things that I went through, being able to have people look at their life and say, you know what, these are the things that I need to look at. These are the things that I need to change about myself. It's never too late to change who you are. You know, a lot of times we feel like, oh, we're getting up in age is too, too, too late for us to change. No, it's not. You know, I've seen people in their 70s and 80s finally going back to school and getting their high school diploma and all these different things. So it's never too late to learn anything. So it's just, you know, when I can look at my life and really say I'm blessed, you know, I really am. Even through my hardship, I can really say I'm blessed because it's like when I seen that time, you know, of me reflecting on when my mom passed away, that was like the person that really loved me. You know, they really cared about me, even though she was going through that depression of losing her husband because she really cared about my dad. Her and my dad were almost uh, what well, her and her ex-husband was together for like 28, 29 years. So that was a long time. And it's just like when I look at my situation with my ex, that's 21 years. That was half of my damn life. You know, I was with him in my 20s and I'm in my 40s. So it, it was just like all those life lessons. You know, no matter how bad it was, it still taught me something. And it's just like, you know, my mom's birthday is coming up in a few weeks. So it's really hard for me right around now. It's like anytime it's getting towards the end of July, early August, I get really depressed. You know, there's times I sit here and cry about my mom. And it's just like, mom, there's so many things that's going on. I wish you were here. Because I remember when my mom, before my mom got really sick and had her stroke, because she knew she had like three tumors in her head. And they, you know, they were mastercizing. So, you know, she tried to tell me a lot, you know, and she was just like, you know, I really want you to meet your dad. You know, um, I just had, you know, she said she kept having these dreams. My mom was an empath as well, um, that things are not going to be right. And I just wanted, you know, through anything that you hear about, I want you to know that I did want you to know, you know, and she was just like, there's things that I wanted you to know, but, you know, 
your my ex-husband you know make sure i he took everything that i can show you proof of because you wouldn't believe me if i told you and i was just like okay you know because i was a, a, that type of person you can tell me anything but you got to show me proof so it was just like going through all those things she always kept on telling me you know i really need you to find your biological father and when you find him you can find your mom you know but i need you to make sure you do that before something gets bad because she already i guess she was like she already had the premonition that my my biological father was going to die and these are the things that you know her ex-husband and his wife was going to put me through and it's just like going through all these different situations of being able to project myself and being able to allow y'all to know my life like that you know because i was just like only the people that were really close to me knew about the things that i went through but then they didn't know everything you know because i kept my childhood very sacred I, I didn't tell a lot of people those things because it was too painful but now being able to open myself up now being able to heal myself each and every day even though there's dark times i really don't understand you know it's a hurtful feeling when i don't have my biological mom around it's a real hurtful feeling as the mom that has raised me that i consider my mom you know is no longer here on earth but she's still here you know metaphysically she's still here with me you know spiritually coaching me through things you know and she's like you're okay you're proud we're proud of you you know because special situations she knows my temper you know i i know i'm even proud of myself for not laying hands on her ex-husband because i know there are many a days my mom don't stuck a foot off of his ass and now i'm just like you know i'll sit up there laughing my mom like I, now i see why you whipped that dude's ass for many years as you did and she would just laugh and all that stuff and, you know she's like don't worry you know things you know things will be differently soon and then she was just you know just allow me to be able to mold myself you know always wanting to save the world helping others you know this is my way but it's like i have to be able to rescue myself first you know i can't be over here trying to save the world and everything like that because i got so much stuff going on mentally emotionally spiritually you have to be able to take that time out for yourself and it's okay for you to be able to live in your hand or be that listening ear or being that person that can support others at their dark time of needs that's okay but you have to make sure you make room for yourself to heal you know and it's a beautiful blessing that i can be able to you know to tell people the things that i've struggled with the things that i you know i deal with all the time that's why i always tell people if you you know if you have children talk to them mold them you know don't force things on them you know they have to be able to experience their life you know that you know i don't want to never control my children's life but it's just like when they start talking about the military want to join the military i'm like Ugh, not with trump in office you can't go that you are not the right shade of uh shade of gray if you want to say it you know i was like being politically correct you're not the right color that, that you want to be over there doing all that stuff you know so it's just allow yourself to not being in nobody's war you know I, I really feel strongly about the military i hate the way they do the military i always sit up here and project in my opinion that you know way the way the military gets paid it sucks because it's like my daughter my daughter's aunt her her oldest aunt just passed away of cancer and she was in the military there's no reason why she should have been struggled be able to get treatment when she don't sit up here and fought so many damn wars in her life you know i feel that way about the military you know the way they pay the football players is the way they need to be paying these military folks because them folks don't come back right you know they you know they struggle with a lot of different things that they can't there's a lot of things they have seen and they experience they ain't gonna be able to unsee and they be able to unexperience you know and i i you know i always tell anybody that i meet that has a branch of the services thank you for your services but you know it really pisses me off because they shouldn't have to struggle to get counseling they shouldn't struggle about getting medication or any kind of income income because they signed a letter to be, be able to go fight a war that ain't got nothing to really do with them and a lot of people don't even come back and you know a lot of people didn't come back the way they came over they've been lost a damn limb or something like that or lost half of their mind you know so i always felt like you know what they need to be able to get paid they should never have to struggle the way they did so this is the reason why i use my platform for where i want to because it's like whenever i get blessings i want to be able to you know help people that are in the military being able to make sure that they have funding they make sure that their their family's taken care of because a lot of them you know when they come back disabled they're not able to work so they're you know they had those wives that were just homemakers or whatever so being able to help their family you know deal with the things that they need to deal with but like i said allow yourself to be able to heal you know it's it's a beautiful thing when we want to reach out and help everybody but you can't be able to do that if you have not helped yourself first so i hope you are able to resonate with the the content of my video i didn't mean to ramble on but hey 
way they want me to sh tell the message is the way that I tell the message. But um, I'm giving post notifications. Shout out to, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, Kelly Borden and Bizel. Much love to you as well. I, I wasn't trying to rhyme. Um, <laughs> like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Drop me a line, you know, so I can go ahead and give you a post notification shout out. Subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and share. Know that you are truly blessed, highly favored, and forever loved. And knowing there's always someone out there praying for your better days. And I will see you on my next uh, video. And I hope y'all have a blessed week and give you the strength to be able to get through the whole week. And I will see you on my next video. Much love. Peace.